Okay, guys, another game from Title Tuesday, and of course, we're using our Pierce Defense. And luckily for me, I got to play another Grandmaster, so we're playing Grandmaster Anton Demchenko. I think that's how you pronounce it. And my opponent started with e4, so we play our Pierce Defense. And guys, everything that we already covered in this course, and the reason why I keep giving you games with this kind of uh, um, voiceover is for you to continue to learn more about the same plans that we already learned. So bishop e3, we know their intentions of queenside castling to attack us on the king side. So I'm going to delay castling. I'm going to expand on the queen side. Now, bishop d3 is more like, oh, maybe a castle to the king side. So I'm doing knight b2 d7 is more flexible. So now if they go queen side, knight b2 d7 is useful. If they go king side, the same thing. And notice that I'm in my elements. My opponent is taking his time. Now, a4, I'm going to do b4, a5. At this point, I know they're not going to castle to the queen side. I got too much space on that side. If anything, they go to the queen side. Now here, some in the past, I have taken on c3, but this time I decided to just do rook b8, guys. And the idea is that if they take me on b4, I take with the rook and I put pressure on that b2 pawn. So that's the idea. Now, other than that, guys, I knew they were going to castle kingside. I'm going to castle as well because they don't have that uh, pawn storm that we that we know. And of course, um, the bishop on e3, the dark square bishop, is something that I want to remove because that battery, bishop and queen for the white pieces, is typically used to remove my fianchetto bishop, which is really, really important. So knight g4, we all know what it is for. More, other than that, we want to do e5 for c5. With these hypermodern openings, we know that we need to, at some point, strike the center. So bishop g5 was a little bit annoying, but I knew I had to continue to attack that bishop. So h6 came in, and of course, we have to consider pawn to h3 by the white pieces. But guys, there's a line of the King's Indian defense where we get something like this. And this is where I tell you that we can always get ideas from the King's Indian defense into the peers, from the peers into the King's Indian defense, even the King's Indian attack, even though it is with the white pieces. So we got to this position, and now I just want to continue to be energetic. So knight f6, just putting pressure on the pawn on g4. And again, guys, I don't think my opponent has anything at all. If you look at the time, remember title Tuesday, with, we start with three minutes, one second increment, and so far it is pretty, pretty even. So knight h2, I was trying to decide if I should take on c3 first or take on g4 first. I took just to open up the b file because if not, they could have done pawn to c4, right? So I wanted to just make sure that I had that file. So now I got to move the bishop and of course it is going to d7 because don't forget guys, the pawns on the, col on the, on the a file are isolated pawns. So we want to put pressure on that target. And of course, we have talked a lot about the pair of bishops, how to use it. And one of the things that we learned is that the pair of bishops is not going to be good unless we find or we create weak pawns so that the bishops can actually put pressure on something. So, of course, I'm thinking of at the right moment doing c5 and so on. Here, my opponent is thinking. And I got to tell you, I, I knew that I was playing a way stronger player uh, but but I was happy with this position. Even if I lost the game, I was going to be happy. <laughs> I was going to be happy with this. So now I think I went for bishop f6, if I'm correct. Yep. And my opponent tries to stay close to my king. Now, I don't want that. I'm playing a way higher rated opponent, so I'm okay with the draw, but my opponent is not. He knows he's a better player, so he's going to try to push and, and get me in trouble. Now, one more time. The king side is not something I'm concerned about. So we got to focus on the queen side where there is an open file, there are weak pawns, and, and so on. There we go. Energetic move. Not only putting pressure on d4 and trying to make my fianchetto bishop even stronger, but also I'm hitting a4. So they have to be very, very careful.
Now, bishop b1, guys, this was like an inv invitation to get the pawn on a4, and, <laughs> and it is hard to resist. Now, at this point, I'm really comfortable. My opponent has 20 seconds. I got a pass pawn on the a file. Now, I'm putting pressure on the rook on, on f1, and my opponent has nothing better but to try to complicate the game. We have talked about this, guys. If your opponent is losing, he has nothing to lose already. He's already in trouble, so he's going to try to complicate the game. So our job is to stay out of trouble, keep any counterplay, keep him at, at margin, right? So here I'm trying to decide, do I take the rook, do I not? Of course, I do have the time to think, but if you think, then you, you have the risk of getting into time pressure. And guys, you don't want to get into time pressure with a 2800 player. So I took and I said, forget about it. If I lose this game, at least I could say I was up material. <laughs> Just uh, took on d4, that's going to be an isolated pawn again. But now I really didn't like that pressure that the bishop was putting on g6. So I think it was at this moment that I decided to get rid of the bishop. And I knew I was not going to get in, I was not going to lose this game. But time pressure, it's not so easy to, to, to play under time pressure, guys. So 10 seconds. Now you either play fast or you play well. You can, you can now do both. So queen a7, trying to advance the pawn. So I just want to, if I have a pass pawn, it is meant to be pushed. Now my opponent's rook gets passive. Time pressure is getting to me. <laughs> now if five guys, mainly to activate my bishop. My opponent says, I don't care about your bishop. The three discovered on the rook. And guys, I'm not concerned about the king at this moment. I have bishop, rook, even my queen could go and help, but there are always things to be careful with. So you see, there's a, there's a pin on my rook. That cannot be good. So I go take care of that. <laughs> there, my, my rook was pinned. There you go. So I run out of time, and there you see the difference between a 2800 player and the rest of us. So anyhow, guys, quickly here to show you the analysis. So I had a brilliant move, proud of that. And the opening itself, as you can see, pretty standard, everything that we have covered. No silly mistakes, some inaccuracies, that's okay. Uh, rook b8, I really liked. It turns out to be inaccurate. And then, um, yeah, it seems like the computer is saying, give the pawn on b4 and then get some counterplay. But that's something that I know for the next time I play this position. Now, knight g4, sound, h6, all of this is sound, knight f6, not so much. So it seemed like breaking the center, striking the center right away was the way to go. Knight um, e5, you see there now, inaccuracies, e5 continues to be the best move. Bishop d7 was good. c5, now this move, we know what it is for. Uh, bishop if I was a mistake, I really like that move because I was hitting um, the rook. And guys, at this point, we are winning. Like, we are 2.20. This is good advantage for the black pieces, but you have to show that you know how to, how to close the game. And again, all the time ahead, but when it comes to time pressure, you either play well or you play fast. So here, d2, I think queen b8, but yeah, who's going to find that move? <laughs> queen b8 with the idea of going to b1. Now pushing the pawn. Blunder, I missed the win, so queen e7 seems to be the move. And if they go away, I had queen e1. But of course, I just did not, I just did not see it. Now, five seconds, anything could happen. But the opening part, guys, which is what I really wanted to show you, the opening part and the middle game position that we got, I hope that you found some value in it, and I will see you in our next lesson.